my name is uh, Wim van Lent. I'm, um, well, my name is very Dutch. I am Dutch. Uh, I work at, uh, uh, I work at uh, Montpellier Business School, so I'm uh, a management scholar. Uh, Montpellier is a town in southern France. I had to look it up myself when I first heard about the school, so you know, don't worry when you don't know your topography uh, very well. Uh, so my research is basically a combination between, um, uh, let's say, strategy, which is my main uh, training, uh, economic sociology, and history. So I'd like to kind of look at long-term historical patterns, uh, also with a little bit of a strategic touch. Okay. So um, our re the research I'll be presenting is uh, I, I do that together with a guy called Andrew Smith based at uh, Liverpool University and someone else called Diego Coriola, who is at uh, the University of Alberta. Um, so this, um, this research was basically inspired by the, by the, the fact that uh, there's a lot of uh, talk about the use of uh, history for corporations, but uh, actually we couldn't find any, um, any quantitative uh, evidence that supports the use of history uh, by corporations or for strategic decision, for strategic decision making. So that's uh, that was basically the idea. And even and also when you look at, uh, I'm just going to give you a very brief uh, theoretical background. So if you look at strategy research, the role of history in strategy is basically limited to what you call path dependency, which is the idea that very briefly it's the idea that. Companies, they embark on a certain historical path and they kind of get locked into a path of success or failure. So if you have a history of success, then according to strategy research, you're much more likely to be, become successful in the future. When you have a record of failure or a record of, of uh, mishap or uh, bad things happening to you, then you're much less likely to succeed in the future. So that's what you call uh, path dependency, which is kind of a limited idea of thinking about companies because it conceptualizes firms as, uh, as passive entities that really don't do anything. There's no managerial agency in that, right? So it's, it's just your history and that determines everything, uh, which is actually quite surprising for such a rich field as strategy that uh, that's the main idea uh, when you talk about history. Um, so Obviously, we're here among uh, like history buffs, you know, among archivists, history-oriented scholars. So there's a lot of evidence already. I don't need to tell you that that history can be informative. Uh, it can help uh, managerial decision making, and we're starting to build on that uh, stream of uh, mostly anecdotal evidence. Okay, so there is um, there is some sort of literature called the uses of the past literature. Uh, that talks about uses so in the academic literature that talks about uh, how history can be uh, uh, important for companies, uh, but that's mainly in a, a sense-giving way. So uh, what that literature talks, talks about is that managers, they go, or CEOs, they go into the history, they create a nice, beautiful image of the company, and that helps, uh, that helps improve the image of the firm towards stakeholders, uh, toward decision makers, uh, customers, et cetera. So it's more uh, a sense-giving kind of, kind of idea. Uh, but what we're interested in uh, in this research is what you call sense-making. So it's, those two elements are quite intimately related, sense-making and sense-giving. So what we want to see, what we want to test is whether using the archive can actually help you understand better the present and help you make uh, better decisions. Okay, that was, that was the idea. So just, just a research question, uh, how, if at all, does senior managers' use of corporate, archive, uh, corporate archives affect firm performance through better decision making? Okay, um, so why would uh, historical information be beneficial for firm decision making? Well, uh, to explain that beforehand, we use what you call analogic reasoning. So uh, you, you can expect that historical information or going into the corporate archive could be beneficial to a company uh, because going back to history might actually enable you to draw historic, and uh, how do you say, historic analogies, right? So you have historical knowledge that can actually inform 
uh, pre uh, present day decision making because you might have actually gone through a similar situation or you might have had similar problems and you can actually learn from that experience through analogy, right? So we use the concept of analogic reasoning, okay? Uh, we've drawn up a few hypotheses uh, so uh, based on that literature on analogic reasoning. So the first one uh, relates to uh, let's say the moment of uh, the timing when do you actually go to the corporate archive? So uh, analogic reasoning is actually most likely to happen or to occur when there is uncertainty in the market or when there's uncertainty in general, okay? So that's why we have one hypothesis one formulated as such uh, When market uncertainty is high firms will be more likely to go back to The archive to figure out what's going on. Okay, so that's hypothesis one Hypothesis two uh, relates to um, the effects of performance. So it's, a, it's kind of related to hypothesis one. So uh, you can also say, well, um, decision makers are generally lazy when it comes to uh, changing the firm. So it's likely to be reactive to some sort of uh, adverse development. Okay. Uh, also, going to the archive is only possible post hoc, so after facts have happened. Uh, you can't go to the archive to, in order to make decisions about what's going to happen in the future, so it's nor normally post hoc. So, um, what we also hypothesize is that uh, bad performance will stimulate uh, firms to go into the archive. Okay, so it's, 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 it's a function of uh, performance, bad performance, okay? Then the final hypothesis is basically the re reverse causality. So what we're going to say is um, going into the archive is also actually good for performance in, at a later stage. So those two will mutually cause each other. So uh, there is um, archival activity in reaction, in response to uh, bad performance at first developments and, the, and going to the archive will actually uh, affect those adverse developments will improve performance uh, in the long run so that's what we're, we're hypothesizing okay so that's just to create a setting uh, this research is about uh, Barclays so you know we're talking about going back into into history well actually we go back until 2003 so that's a long time ago um, so it's nine years, we're looking at uh, Barclays Bank, and we have data on archival usage by what you call Barclays Corporate Secretariat, uh, which is the strategic apex of uh, Barclays Bank, okay? Uh, so we're looking at the period 2003 to 2012, which is basically the lead up uh, to the global financial crisis. Um, and what is interesting about Barclays Bank uh, in that period is that, well, in the lead up to that, uh, to those years under study, um, the bank had become a lot more risk uh, tolerant, a lot more, um, a lot more, ex uh, how do you say, explorative. Um, so they were taking more risks, and uh, with the advent of the financial crisis, they had problems with their market capitalization. Um, what else? There is also more, uh, more uh, scrutiny of the banking world as a result of that financial crisis, which led to all sorts of claims. Um, uh, government agencies, they discovered that some of the financial products were not good. Uh, they, had, they were of poor, poor value, so they faced a lot of claims. They had to make a lot of uh, compensation payments. So there was actually a lot of pressure, uh, uh, understandably, during that financial crisis. And what is interesting about Barclays Bank is that they decided to go back to those Quaker principles upon which the bank was founded. So they resorted, to, they decided to resort back to history in order to uh, find a way out of that crisis, okay? So uh, that's why it's an interesting research context uh, to tease out whether going to the corporate archive is actually uh, useful, okay? So now it's going to become a little bit technical. Um, so we have a number of data sources. Uh, first of all, we talk to uh, corporate archivists, not only at Barclays Bank, but also at HSBC and the Bank of England, just to get a bit of a wider perspective. 
Uh, and then we have uh, a range of quantitative data, um, economic variables, but most importantly, um, use of the archive by uh, Barclays Corporate Secretariat. Uh, there are different types of requests, actually, that are recorded. Uh, we have um, so strategic requests by Barclays Corporate Secretary, but also um, um, claim-related uh, requests. So, for example, when uh, account holders uh, lay claim on a company, they actually have to go back into the archive to see what the account was about and if they actually, if the customer has a right to any claim, right? So that, that they also uh, record those, those archival requests. So there are different types of archival requests. Uh, the most important one is, is what, I, what I say, the, the request by Barclays Corporate Secretariats. Those are the strategic uh, requests. Now the problem is, I'll come back to that later, the problem is that uh, the archivist could not disclose to us what these requests were about, uh, because that's commercially sensitive data. Um, so there's an embargo on that type of information. Uh, but what we do know is that uh, that number of requests uh, is related to strategic decision making. That's, that's what we know for sure. Uh, so there are a range of covariates um, in order to control for all sorts of other uh, explanations, alternative explanations. Uh, I'm not going to talk too long about that. Um, so, uh, yeah, okay, methods. So, um, what is important to know is that, uh, so I talked to you about causality, right? Um, so, performance might affect the number of archival requests. Going to the archive might affect performance, and that creates an empirical problem, actually. So, when you start modeling quantitatively, uh, the effect of corporate archives, you have to uh, deal with uh, a problem called endogeneity, right? So it's reverse causality. That's why in this time series model, we, um, we use a technique called vector autoregression. Well, I'm not going to uh, go into any details because uh, I don't even know all the details. I'm just, uh, so, you know, using statistics sometimes just like driving a car. Like if, if, as long as you know how to use it, that's fine. You, know, you don't need to know all the combustion, you know. Stuff like that. So I can explain to you in very simple terms. Uh, vector autoregression auto models a number of variables as dependent variables at the same time, which means that you, uh, you, get an, uh, you get a number of models at the same time, and you can actually see where causality goes, okay? Because you model all these dependent variables at the same time. Um, so our most important variables are, well, uh, the number of strategic requests by Barclays Corporate Secretariat and also perform performance uh, me as measured by earnings per share, okay? Uh, data were qu uh, on a quarterly basis, so we have well, for nine years, nine times four, uh, how much is that, uh, 36? Uh, observation, a bit, bit more. Uh, we have a, uh, yeah, a bit, bit more than that. So, um, that's, uh, that's our data set, basically. Um, right, so these are, this is, again, a bit technical, um, but I've highlighted the most important results. Uh, first of all, um, so re related to hypothesis one about un market uncertainty, what we find in this model, uh, I hope I can point it out, yeah. Uh, so we had two measures for market uncertainty, the LIBOR rate, which is the interbank exchange rate, right? So that goes up when uncertainty is higher and goes down when uncertainty is lower, and a market volatility index called the VIX, okay? And what is important to know is that, uh, so once again, so those two models are, sorry, those two variables are modeled at the same time, so performance and archival activity, uh, you get two equations. And you can basically look at all sorts of uh, all, all directions of causality, okay? So uh, the LIBOR rate is here. Well, that's uh, not significant at all, right? So it's not related to uh, archival activity whatsoever. And what is actually interesting is that market volatility, as measured by VIX, is actually significant but negative, which means that with more, uh, with more uh, uh, uncertainty, uh, archival activity actually went down. 
which is kind of counterintuitive because you would say, well, with more, acti with more uncertainty, you would have more uh, archival activity. So the only, reason, the only way we can explain this is by arguing that, well, actually the bank benefits in some, in some way from market uncertainty, okay? Which is actually uh, supported by uh, this finding that market uncertainty is good for performance, uh, which is here, right? So market uncertainty uh, has a positive effect, very strong positive effect on performance. So performance goes up as a result of market uncertainty and the archival requests go down as a result, okay? So basically, hypothesis one is not supported. So market uncertainty in this situation uh, for the bank um, did not have any, uh, any, any, any positive effect on, on archival uh, activity, okay? Then, second hypothesis, um, is archival activity actually related? Is it a function of adverse performance or, or bad performance? Um, so uh, what we see is that if you look at archival activity again, you see that uh, earnings per share eventually has a negative performance effect, uh, sorry, has a negative effect on, on archival activity, which, which supports the second hypothesis. We basically find that archival, uh, sorry, that, that, that performance, uh, bad performance, eventually stimulates um, uh, archival activity. So performance goes, uh, goes up, archival activity goes down, right? So with bad performance, uh, the other direction, bad performance stimulates archival activity eventually, okay? These are basically lags, so we, we have, we use different, different periods, different quarters, so after three quarters, we find this uh, negative effect, okay? So that actually confirms the second hypothesis that uh, bad performance leads to more archival activity. Then, uh, going to the third hypothesis, so the most important one probably, uh, does archival activity improve performance? Well, uh, yes, if we look at this equation, the uh, EPS equation, we see that initially, so in the beginning, let's say after two periods, there's a negative effect, so archival activity uh, negatively affects performance, that's not good, but eventually there is a positive performance effect. Uh, we can explain this, uh, at least our explanation for these findings is that initially going to the archive is costly. It's a costly activity. Uh, it demands time, resources, etc. Uh, but eventually there are actually uh, positive performance effects. Okay. Um, so this, reserve, this suggests mutual causality. That's actually uh, confirmed by our Granger causality test. Granger causality in a very brief, uh, let's say, very briefly, basically measures um, what comes first in terms of time, right? So uh, let's say at time one you have one phenomenon and at time two there's another phenomenon, let's say phenomenon two, you could say, well, phenomenon one, Granger causes phenomenon two because it comes earlier in time, okay? Uh, that's basically the best thing we can do with time series analysis, or at least with these data, we can talk about Granger causality. And you see that actually there is mutual causality because, well, both coefficients are significant. Uh, what is interesting maybe is that the causality of archival activity toward performance is much stronger, much more significant than, uh, stronger and more significant than the other way around. Uh, which suggests that the performance effects of archival activity are stronger than the other, the other around, okay? So uh, this is what uh, our quantitative model uh, suggests. So uh, there is a mutual causality and going to the archive actually helps uh, firm performance, okay? So this is a summary of what I've talked about. Hypothesis one, not supported, so there's no link in this situation with market uncertainty. Uh, archival activity is reactive to uh, negative performance, uh, bad performance, and going to the archive eventually helps uh, firm performance, okay? Um, so we've done also some archive, sorry, sorry, some, uh, some interviews, some qualitative analysis, uh, and what we found, so once again, commercially sensitive data we could not get any access to, so the uh, archivist was also not able to actually explain how 
uh, going to the archive was beneficial. So we had to kind of resort to exter like external documents, other alternative types of um, uh, qualitative information. What you could disclose is that the, uh, most of the archival requests were related to mergers and acquisitions. So there's uh, uh, basically which country are you entering, which country are we leaving, so where are we active. That's uh, a big uh, decision field, to put it like that. Um, and also what we found in external documentation is that opportunity recognition uh, was a big one, a big reason, a big mechanism uh, for this performance effect. Uh, we have some, um, some data on uh, basically how uh, external financial analysis um, helped uh, Barclays to identify market opportunities. Right? So they basically invited external researchers to look into, let's say, 100 years of data. They identified, based on these data, they identified market opportunities. And on, on that basis, um, Barclays was able to make uh, investments, right, successful investments. So we, we labeled that opportunity recognition as a, as a mechanism, okay? Right, so uh, this, this should be a very reassuring message to you because, uh, well, we have shown that uh, going to the archive is actually very useful. Um, so what are the practical implications? Well, first of all, having an archive, managing an archive is useful, right? So there are definitely performance, beneficial performance effects. Uh, so that should justify investments in, uh, investments of resources, investments in uh, in, in corporate archives. Um, also, connecting to uh, the first presentation this morning uh, about digital data. So, uh, uh, there is a reason for collecting and, and, and storing data. So, also, digital data, we should be very careful about that because that can generate a lot of, uh, let's say, opportunities, uh, information that's strategically interesting. Uh, and also, um, that's more like my field, uh, academia, um, management history is actually important. It's kind of, um, you know, it's a low status field in management science, uh, but it is an important field. Uh, education about history is important. Uh, managing history, it's all important because it actually serves companies, right? So that's why I'd like to make a case also for uh, education, uh, historical education in management programs. Right. Uh, just to finish this, uh, this research uh, talk, like the research part, I have a few announcements afterwards, is that there are a few limitations. Um, so once again, the commercially sensitive data, we could not really get into the, the mecha, we could not talk to CEOs, we could not really directly assess how uh, these effects that we've measured were actually uh, established. Uh, and also there may be scope conditions, so uh, using history might work differently for different companies. Right? And that's why uh, we also want to, uh, so we have one paper that's now under, under review at a, at a top journal, uh, but we want to actually expand on this research. So, um, well, I talked to Vrunda, so I'll get all your emails. So I will stalk you with, um, with an email that asks you to uh, partake in a, um, uh, in, in an online survey because we want to know from, from archivists, corporate archivists, how they experience their work and how they feel about the use of their profession for, for companies, right? So we, um, we want to expand on this. We want to know a lot more about the working of archives in different countries and different industries. So uh, this is just a preliminary survey, but we're designing more advanced surveys uh, to expand on, on, our, uh, on our findings. Right? Um, so that's uh, one thing. Uh, another thing is, uh, so I'm going to conclude with this, that I'm actually uh, also an associate editor for uh, the Journal of Management History. And um, uh, so I'm co-editing a special issue on uses of history in management, right? Historical methodology in management history. And what I think would be very interesting uh, so we had a talk, for example, about, uh, you know, that, that platform, uh, how histories can, can be brought to life. 
uh, I think that kind of stuff, uh, how can you engage with history, how can you uh, derive knowledge from an historical database, I think that'd be very interesting also for the academic uh, audience. So if you have, I don't know, a documented text or I know that there's some research on archival science, uh, but if you have a paper or a document or a text that you would like to submit, it's a bit short notice, I know, but you know, uh, then we'd love to consider it uh, for that special issue because I think that um, uh, a lot of that archival knowledge uh, could be very useful for the academic uh, audience as well because in the end there's, I've, I've talked to a few people and uh, uh, there's a lot, a lot of segregation between different, different professions, Arch archivists, uh, management scholars, historians, they're all kind of on different islands and uh, I think it'd be very good to, uh, to integrate those worlds. So if you have anything or if you want to submit something, uh, talk to me uh, or send me some of your, some of your work uh, and we'd love to consider it for that special issue. All right, so that was it. Uh, thank you very much. And, um,